Now, one of the other much smaller slivers was remote sensing, right? Looking at the Earth. I guess the natural question is, why do it at all from space? Clearly, there has to be much better ways, right? Yeah, so I mean, remote sensing is a small part of the commercial market. It's yeah. absolutely dwarfed by GPS and yes. by communications. But it's also a pretty large part of the military budget. Ah. How much is a classified <laughs> one? So we can add together the military and civil. That pie changes dramatically. OK, that's gotcha. right. But the question remains, why? If you tried to study the Earth, would you go into space to do it? Yeah, I mean, can't, like if I were to study you, I'd probably do it here. I wouldn't yeah. ask a spacecraft to look at you. That seems a bit perverse. I mean, we also even have things like drones and stuff like that nowadays, right? Yeah, if you want a, a picture from above, send up a drone. It's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be better probably than most of those satellites as well. So I guess there are three use cases okay. where you really want remote sensing from space. Yep. The first one is where you can't fly your drone over it, which is the military application. So you want to see without knowing you're being you're watching. Well, not necessarily that, because I mean every military power knows where everyone else's fire satellites That's are. That's true. So uh, I mean, it, it, for, during the uh, uh, the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia, for example, they knew exactly when the American spy satellites would go over and made sure they only moved their troops at other times. And that's right. They did that famously during the Cuban Missile Crisis as well in the early days and things like that. But the thing is, you can fly a spacecraft over your enemy countries, and you probably can't get away with flying a drone or a balloon. That's a little <laughs> controversial right now at the time of uh, speaking over these places. Or, or back in the day, spy planes, right? That was notorious yes. and, and all the consequences with that. So yes, being able to look at things where you can't fly something over it is one situation. And that's also why I guess the military has a large fraction of its budget dedicated to this. Yep. Then there's when you need data on a very wide area. Yep. Um, so let's say you want to look at the, all the world to measure crops or weather or something like that, it, then it's you could do it from the ground, but you need so many sensors and so many drones, it's going to be really hard. Yeah, so there it actually becomes almost a cost argument, right? Where it is a cost, The yes. other way would just be so much more expensive than building the satellites to do it. And it could be monitoring lots of locations. Yep. So for example, at one point, apparently McDonald's was considering using s satellites to spot new suburbs being built. Uh. And so they could be the first in by putting a McDonald's fast food restaurant in there. Why am I not surprised? Uh, I mean, you could do it on the ground, but there's a lot of cities in the world. And having right. someone in every city who can tell you, oh, they're building a new suburb out here, it's easy just to pay one company to do it all from space. And I guess especially nowadays with computer processing and AI, that's actually really straightforward of calculating. You're not looking at every individual yeah. image and finding it. So here's an example of using it for spy military. This is that's, the compound that Osama bin Laden was in. Yep. Um, and I guess you're right. They didn't fly a plane or a balloon over it because it would kind of give the clue. That's right. So this is definitely what the military use it a lot. Um, and at the moment, huge numbers of military cameras yeah. are pointed at, uh, at uh, Ukraine, so everyone's seeing where everyone else is. Yes. Um, then there's the weather satellite. This is the view from combining three weather satellites from the European Meteorological Organization. And this is, and this is your example of you want to actually see things across the world as a whole, and it's just not practical to do it elsewise. Yes, yeah, so the weather in the middle of the South Atlantic you need to know what's happening there because it's going to affect Australia. Yeah, later. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but having boats and weather balloons all over the South Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something that you could do it from the ground if you had millions of weather stations and people launching weather balloons from all over the place. Because that's how you're right. It's also a people investment, right? So that also builds into your cost. And that's how it used to work, of yeah. course, before they had satellites. Yeah. But now they still have a bit of that to calibrate everything else. But most of the data comes yes. from the satellites. Um, and of course, as we said, if you wanted to monitor large parts of the world to see how many ships are queuing up outside a particular port or something, and you can look to every port in the world with just one company and one contract. Mm.